Last year, I got an amazing photo of Saturn with my 8-inch Celestron C8, and this is the photo I got. But now you're probably thinking, since you clicked on this video, how did I actually go about getting this image and what techniques did I use to actually get this kind of image in this amount of quality? Well, one thing that really helped me get this image I got, besides my 8-inch telescope, of course, was the ZWO ASI 178mm. Now, this is a pretty good camera, mainly because of the frame rate speed. The frame rate is really fast, it's really consistent, and you definitely get a much faster frame rate, so you're collecting a ton of exposure. Um, in a short period of time and still, you know, collecting enough light to make it less fuzzy. So this is what this camera is good for. And especially if you take too long of exposures, like the frame rate's too low, like 60 FPS, 30 FPS, it doesn't look the best because you're actually smudging um, because it's um, planets move very quickly. And especially when it seems bad, you need to have a very stable frame, which means you have to do quicker frame rates, if that makes sense. Well, now to the actual techniques and how I got this image. Um, one of the biggest things I definitely did was use focus very precisely. Um, what I did was, is I made sure I would spend a lot of time focusing, like with this focuser back here, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I would play around with it. I would constantly look at my computer and be like, oh yeah, it looks a slight bad out of focus, like the tiniest bit. So I'd adjust it just a tiny bit. I'd make sure it was super precise. I would not let it go. I had to keep focusing until it was perfect. This is very crucial, especially in bad seeing, because generally here in Ohio, we don't get great seeing, um, well, especially in my location, but we don't get amazing seeing here in Ohio regardless. So, especially because of that, you wanna make sure your focus is very precise, because if it's not, well, you're not gonna end up with the best image, because, you know, of course, even in good seeing, really, uh, it's easier to focus in good seeing, so you don't have to spend as much time on it, um, but in bad seeing, it's really hard to focus. If you do want to focus very precisely and make sure your focus is top notch, I would definitely recommend like a Crayford focuser. Those can really also help. But what would actually allow you to focus really good as well is definitely collimation. I know I've talked about this several times, but it's very important that you have really good collimation, mostly because um, it's kind of like astigmatism. If you have astigmatism in your vision, like your eyes, um, it really hurts your eyes. Like you can't be able to focus anywhere. Like even if you're in perfect focus, like technically you have 20-20 vision in terms of um, farsightedness and nearsightedness, whatever, um, you still won't be able to focus because astigmatism basically focuses on the wrong angle. Same with you have a telescope that's out of collimation. This can really hurt um, your images because it'll kind of look like one thing's shifted off and then you have the planet in the middle. It just doesn't look right. Um, if you have that, that probably means your telescope is out of collimation. This is one thing I definitely do is spend a lot of time collimating your telescope because to be honest, it's not gonna look great if you don't collimate your telescope really well. So I definitely spend a lot of time outside figuring out the perfect collimation and then maybe leave it for a couple days. If you're imaging constantly, you can leave it for a couple days. Um, it won't hurt anything, especially if it's a Schmidt cast screen. If you have a reflector, you need to collimate like almost every time you use the telescope. Unfortunately, I had a reflector, I, um, yeah, I didn't like that thing. I had to constantly collimate it. So yeah, it was just not for me. Um, but this thing, yeah, this is it's giving me some leeway. I can still use it day to day and not have to collimate it every time, but I do collimate it quite often, maybe like once a week. So you've got your telescope collimated and now you also got it focused. The next step is to make sure you stay outside in image for as long as possible. I'm saying this because if you know what seeing is, it's basically the uh, atmospheric clarity, turbulence, um, that kind of stuff. So if you have bad seeing, which in Ohio, as I talked about before, we kind of have bad seeing. So technically, I definitely recommend if you're, you know, in a, especially in the location of bad seeing, um, take as many frames as possible, even in good seeing, especially because all, it really matters. The more seeing you, or the more images you collect, the less noise you're going to get. The SNR improves, seeing notice ratio. Um, not only that. You also get, um, you know, more frames to work with, even better seeing possibly yet. So I definitely recommend taking as much as possible, maybe like 100,000 frames. I know it sounds like a lot, but take as much as possible, even if you don't really want to, because those moments of seeing, the good moments of seeing can pop in randomly. You never know, you buy seconds, by minutes, even if it looks kind of cloudy, hazy-ish, they could pop in every second. Like any second, you can just have a moment of good seeing, and that can change your whole entire image if you like stack like 10% called lucky imaging. And that brings me to my final but most important tip. Make sure you're in a site of decent seeing. I know I say this, but, or on a night of good seeing, let's say. Um, the main reason I got this image of Saturn is because of the seeing. If I weren't to have this excellent scene this night, I wouldn't have gotten anywhere close to this image. Actually, this scene could have been a lot better. They say in one in 50 nights in a typical astro location, 
actually has great seeing. Another thing is, um, if you want to check to see if your seeing is going to be good that day, um, there's an app called Astrospheric. I use it all the time. It tells me when the seeing is good, and I found it to be pretty accurate. So definitely try that out if you want to uh, make sure that you're going on out and on a good scene. It won't be completely accurate, but it'll be pretty close. So I definitely recommend checking it out and it's free. So you can download it on the app store or wherever you'd like. And seeing is very important because if you don't have good seeing, um, it's going to be blurry, it's going to be fuzzy, it's going to be wavy everywhere, so it's going to end up being blurry and harder to sharpen. If you notice that you're stacking images and they're really hard to sharpen, probably due to bad seeing. And then if they have like a halo around them, probably bad transparency. If they have a little bit of a shift, collimation. And also, if they have a halo, it could also be out of focus. If it's blurry, it has a halo, but it looks sharp on the edge, it's probably out of focus. So that is how I got this photo of Saturn. If you want to check out more of my work, the link to my Etsy shop is in the description below. Also, um, I run this channel here. My name is Asher. I run Astrotography Quest. I make YouTube videos about astrotography, deep sky, planetary, solar, um, lots of astronomy related stuff. So if you like the kind of content, make sure to subscribe. Anyways, until next time, clear skies. See you in the next one.